Hello and welcome back to Strawman Live. My name is Dartra Artemis Atkins and I come to you from the arena of confidence at IDS. At the moment, I have the pleasure of introducing you to Andreas Schulteis, the CEO of, of uh, Rapid Shape, and he's uh, Strawman's partner for 3D printing technology. So he's going to talk to us about how 3D printing is disrupting the industry. Andreas. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much, Alamadis. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, tell our viewers actually first a little bit about yourself, please. Yes. So thank you so much for joining us today for the How 3D Printing is Disrupting the Industry session. Um, my name is Andreas. Um, I'm the managing director of company Rapid Shape. Uh, so Rapid Shape is all about 3D printing, and Rapid Shape is also the 3D printing partner of Strawman um, worldwide. Um, my background I'm an engineer. Um, I'm also having an MBA. Um, I worked in management consulting before for a few years and then I joined the company as a CEO and founded another company which is Rapid Shape today. Very good and I'm glad you did that because I like this. <laughs> okay so first thing I wanted to do was have you, you've prepared a presentation for our audience. Yes I have. Um, we're going to go quickly through the presentation and then I have some questions for you in between. So take it away. Thank you so much. So actually I will have two sessions for yes. you. So the first session is all about chair side printing. So today we want to introduce you really about some innovation, something which is disruptive about chair side and how chair side, professional chair side printing can be in the arena of confidence. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure that you know the Nespresso capsule system. I yes. think there's no yes. one left on earth that doesn't. Yeah, sure. So why do we love it? We love it actually because it's super speedy, because it's a high quality um, and it's immediate available. Easy. It's easy. It's easy and it's no mess. Yes. It's no mess. Right? So, and actually we want to take that idea, just that emotion, you know, it's just an emotion from coffee drinking, but we want to take that emotion and we want to have it inside 3D printing. And so what I will present today is the capsule system for 3D printing. Very nice. So when you think about capsules, think about immediate availability. Think about automation. Think about a lot of, not a lot of work to do with it. Think of high effectiveness of the doctors. Think about a professional system. We will not tell you one of the other hobbyists whatsoever. It is a strong and validated professional system. It is super easy to use. It is fast, validated as said. It's high quality. It's super flexible. It has so many things that you can do with it. And there is a full cost transparency of the system. So how does it look like? You just see it on the screens. It is actually three systems which are joining strengths together. So we have the capsule printer mm -hmm. with the capsule which I have just shown. And we have a washing system and we have a curing system. And the way it works is that you start with an intraoral scan. So you take from the intraoral scan the patient data, then you go into the design and then you start actually with 3D printing. And the way you start is you take one of the capsule boxes, you open the capsule box, you take the material out, you take a single-use tray out, you take a single-use platform out, you put it inside the printer. This will take you around about one minute or two minutes. And you will have capsules from all the variety. variety. So think of the Nespresso again. So if you want an Nespresso, if you want a Lelungo or whatever, <laughs> here you have to crown in the bridge, here you have to splint, you go for it. Then you print as... We know it from the P-series, it's all about fast printing and high precision printing, so it will take you 15 minutes. And then you need to automate. So you go into the wash, six minutes, and you go into the cure, which is another six to eight minutes. So that's the simple process. Right. So how about design? Because all the steps which I just indicated to you, they're simple. So they can be done from staff, which is non-technical staff. So, but... How is about the designing? Because this is actually the most complex which remains. So you go for the local easy mode solutions. So we have from the CARES, even from the co-diagnostics, we have easy mode software. Or we connect to our lab around the corner. So the relationship with the lab, we want to strengthen that. You know, that's not that we, we want to take the lab out of here. Not at all. We want to strengthen that relationship. Um, or you can go to a centralized design center. So probably some of you have printed already a little bit and you know this is how it looks. So if you look on the screen, 
dirty uh, job. It's a dirty job. It's a dirty job. By today, and this is the disruptive thing, we want to change that. We want to change it to something which is really clean, which is really easy. So please forget about this. And it will start with the P10 capsule, which is available now. So please, when you are here in Cologne, go outside and look at the show. Um, there is a great team that can present you the P10 Plus capsule. You will have two sizes, which the printer can do for a small capsule and for the big capsule. So for crown and bridge or for splint or for whatever. Um, then also we have the wash here. Um, as said, it's a fully automatic uh, system, very effective in use. Um, and you will have no any touch to cleaning agent. And also it's about the curing box. And the systems are interlinked together, so they talk with each other. Um, so that means it's just for you a step, 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 and you are done. What I missed out so far, besides just saying it's flexible, is, you know, what means flexibility? And yes. there we are at the indications. Yes, I was going to ask you about that. What are the indications for local printing for me in my clinical practice? Yeah, I mean, if, if you are doing it in your clinical practice, so maybe you want to just go for a quick splint, a probe system splint. Right. So go for it. Go for the design. You will have this print printed in 15 minutes with the wash and the cure, half an hour, and you have a good splint ready for use in patient mouth. Biocompatible class 2A. Okay. Um, crown and bridge work. So you can go for even uh, indirect bonding trace. So to place the brackets, you can also go for a surgical guide. All that is locally available. Very good. I'm going to challenge you now. You ready? Okay, <laughs> let's go for it. Okay, in my clinical practice, my time is best spent with the patient. Yes. My dental assistants with no technical background, no medical background, have to be able to handle printing, 3D printing in the office. Yeah. I want to know how. See, we thought about this before, and you know, it's, it's, <laughs> thank you Sorry. so much, but it's, you know, it's lab work, it's a technician's work, usually, yes. but when Stroman comes up with a card, with a capsule system, when we come up with a chair side solution, we want to make sure that this is all set. So the preparation time of one minute is all that locally needs to be done. Then you need to take out the parts, place it in the, on the other machines, they will call you, they will pre-select the, like, the right program, so it's really made to be super simple, to make to be super easy, and that you don't lose time. That you is so important from your staff right. to be focused on care. the on the dentist yes. or to be uh, to be focused on the patient. So it's really made to be simple. Very we good. say it's actually training free, but the truth is we will not let you alone. We will install the system. We will give you all the introduction, yes. uh, but within one day you are done. Good. Okay. Now I want to know more about. So this was chair side solution yes. for printing. I would like to also know for my lab colleagues watching yes. out there about lab solutions yeah. for printing, 3D printing. So, so actually, 3D printing is usually for labs. So the way that we know is, is really it's for labs. 3D printing is a lab thing. So we present the chair side solution because there is dentists that want to go and also right. to have some local availability. And But for sure, they will also work together with their labs for some, some more volume, higher volume stuff. So, and actually with our portfolio that we had in 2017, we had three printers focusing mainly on lab. So the P20, P30, and the P40. So the first thing what we have done is we extended the portfolio to the, to the lower side. Why? Because there was still a certain price tag, and we have seen a lot of customers also going into some hobbyist machines, non-professional machines, and so we also wanted to give hands to those labs to come up with us and to start. So, the first thing what I want to introduce is the P20 cartridge. It is a system that includes all you need for printing, and you're just ready to go and it comes at a very attractive price point. The P20 Plus, we have a facelift, and in this facelift, the machine comes 30% faster, and we have a nice large LCD touchscreen. So, it's also about handling. The P30 Plus is the successor of the P30, logically, and whereas the old P30 had some automation inside, it was not a fully automated machine. By today, I would like to introduce to you that we have completely automated the P30 also to separate the parts after building and to automatically restart with the next job. So the machine becomes more effective for the lab. The P40 just remains as a good seller as it is today and the wash and the cure as well for the labs. First, the cartridge. Yes. So a little bit more detail about the cartridge. 
for printing, you need to have a resin reservoir, you have resin bottles, you need to have storage devices whatsoever. We all put that together in the cartridge at a small, smaller volume. So we just have 100 or 200 gram of material inside, a resin reservoir which is just matching to that. It is super easy to use, again, high quality. It's for low to mid volume. And it's actually the most optical thing for up to seven parts per day. It's the most effective in cost for that one. The system is large, so you can do an upper and a lower jaw at the same time. You can do up to four splints at the same time, etc., etc., etc. So, it's, by the way, if your lab starts to grow, and even if you have invested in that entry machine, right. you can upgrade the machine to a P20+. Plus. So, you're not locked with that small system. You can upgrade to the P20+, Plus, which will give you all the open system availability. Mm-hmm. Now, the P30 and that's already the last for the lab. The P30 has that automation. So it has, beside that fancy automatic door, beside that large touchscreen, beside the automatic heating system, it has a system that automatically cuts off the part. And I just want to give you a, a short video in here uh, where you see a slow-mo, just how this system is taking off the parts by themselves. So before, the lab technician was doing that with a spatula or with a knife. Oh, wow. And this machine is just doing it by itself. Mm. It's fetching the parts in a box, taking the box to the front, and it restarts, making the next job. So there is no pause time, as the Japanese say, no muda in between. No muda. No muda. Like we it. avoid the muda. We avoid the muda. <laughs> and we just go on with the next step. Okay, so talk to me a little bit about the lab cartridge system. As far as quality goes, is this similar, the same quality as the P30? Yes, yes. So, whatever we do in Stroman, we have zero compromise on quality. So, whether it is a P10 for the chair side or it's a P20 cartridge, it's just the same system. It's just made more effective and more easy to use, coming at a more attractive price point. Material cost is a little bit higher for the cartridge system, but still, it is more effective for below seven parts a day. So let's say I'm a lab and I want to know why I should invest in the P-Series versus um, the lower cost form labs, for example. You know, there is a lot of great products out there, so don't get me wrong. But actually the P-Series stands for professional systems, reliable systems, and we are super, super quick. So actually, when you just compare directly to form labs, it's a little bit a slower system. It gives you a locked system from side of the materials. We give you an open system, and we give you four times, five times, six times the speed, uh, and the quality is just there. So actually, that's a little bit a tough time for RapidShare because we get so much validated from Stroman, but it's also what helps us improving a lot for the benefit of the lab, for the benefit of the dentist. Very nice. Thank you. We like to validate our products. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, Um, talk to me about (laughs) benefits of automation of the P30. See... um, if you, if, you, if you automate the process, normally what we have, we have a printer which is just producing the, the platform and then it hangs around there for another 5 to 10 to 15 minutes. What we can do in the P30 Plus is we can put a queue of jobs. So we say print this first, this second, this third, this fourth. So, and then you don't need to come right at the spot, right at the time um, to, the, to the printer, taking the parts out, cleaning them. So it's giving you more productivity, actually, of the system. It makes you, the machine, produce more. So that's one part. And the second, taking the parts off is not the nicest job, actually. And it just fulfills that taking off the parts automatically. Releases a human from doing something a machine can do. Yes, Which is great. Absolutely. Now, I want to talk to you. I want you to comment a little bit about the lab position into the future relating to things like this. Um, how do you feel about some of the, our lab colleagues and their security level for their future? There's, there's two sides. There's two sides of that. First of all is the indications. Um, we see great materials coming up. There was a lot of indications from last ideas, from also 2015 ideas, from Chicago midwinter, um, about new materials. But what we have today is not only model material, not only surgical guide material, Today, we introduced a splint. So a splint which is not breaking, by the way. Please use it with your toughest customers. 
use it with your toughest patience to get a, an own feeling about that works. But we are happy to say that we have studies that it's working fantastically and that the breakage rate of splints, even seen in over one year, is fantastic. So it's below 7% actually. Wow. Yeah. What about for, in terms of, so let's say that I already have the P-Wash and the P-Cure. Can I also use these in the lab? C certainly. So the wash and the cure are made for the lab and for chair chairside. They are very effective to use. But let me come one time back to the lab. Because it's not only about splint, it's also about denture material coming up. It's also about uh, surgical guide material coming up. Uh, sorry, it's also about uh, indirect bonding tray material. So the, the, the spread of the portfolio that you can produce with a 3D printer is growing. We even present today semi-permanent printed crowns and bridges. So it's not only just about the, the temporary use, so it also goes into the permanent use. Okay. All available with Strawman under the P-Pro materials. Nice. Second, I think that labs will also start to work in addition to their local printing, also in a digital workflow together with the, the, the dentist. Why? Because the dentist also need to have design work at his site. So this relationship will not only be strengthened on an hardware-based, part-based, it will also be strengthened on a database. The other thing I want to know about is I'm uh, a clinician and I often just like to have the lab do what the lab does and I do what I do. So talk to me about why should I do this locally? Why should I do 3D printing locally if I can just have my lab do it? As a dentist? Yes. <laughs> Actually, it, it really depends on you. So if you see for your, for your practice, if you see a benefit of having a local immediate availability of a 3D printing part. If you, for example, have uh, patients traveling long distance and you don't have a practice lab with you or don't you have a, a really close by lab, so then that's the perfect situation. Mm -hmm. So it gives you the time to react immediately. But as well, I believe that in future you will even increase the collaboration with your lab. Why? Because you will make more with intraoral scanning. So you will do more things in a digital manufacturing than in an analog way. And so this is the collaboration with the lab. Mm -hmm. And there is chance or reason to have it local. It will be in parallel. Right. And a lot of us actually have labs. I just, a lot of us have labs on site. So yes. it's not. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, what about messiness? Yes. Yes. How, how clean are these? You mentioned that earlier, that the systems have become quite clean. I want to know this was core. This. <laughs> this, this. This was really core. You know, I mean, talk, talking about chair side printing, it's not only because, you know, you had this one liter bottles and you had to put them inside the printer. And as a dentist assistant, you don't want to handle a one liter photopolymer bottle. So it was also about getting the parts automatically clean. And the wash system that we did is really a full-fledged integrated system. So when you open the wash, there will be no cleaning agent inside. So you never touch the cleaning agent. It is first filled into the wash, and then from filling into the wash, actually, it cleans. At the end, you need to get rid of the smell, uh -huh. because there's isopropylic alcohol. I knew there was a catch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what we do is, we have an active carbon filter inside, which actually get rid of all the smell, and then only we open the door. So it's really not messy anymore. The only thing that you need to have is to wash just inside the printer. You take it out, you place it inside, the rest does the wash for you. Now talk to me about workflow. I want to know the process. You mentioned earlier there was a process to this thing. Can you walk me through, if I am considering doing this investment and getting into 3D printing locally, walk me through what my team and I have to deal with as part of the process that you showed earlier. Can you just repeat? The workflow yeah. of how I engage the machine and go through the 3D printing process. Yeah. You showed it earlier the yeah. workflow. I'd like to know yeah. more about that. So the workflow starts always with the scan. Yes. So you need to have an intraoral scanner. Which we are integrated into the... Um, which we have fully yes. integrated into the CARES workflow. Exactly. From the CARES or from, from the scan, you go onto the CARES software. And then either you do a local with the easy mode software, so you do a local CAD design, and then you go directly to the printer, which is all integrated. So the workflow is 100% integrated. It's an automatic process. You just say next, next, next. There come some prepared values, and from there it goes right to the end. Um, or you send it via the cloud to the lab, and the printer is on the cloud either. 
So that means the club has your ID and your password of your printer, and then they will send the data directly to your printer and your printer will start working automatically. Very nice. Last question. Okay. I want to learn a little bit from your perspective what you see as the future in terms of 3D printing and dentistry and the industry. I want to hear your thoughts about where you see this in the short to midterm, maybe even long term. We are still not too much digital. So, and the digital revolution is, you know, it's ongoing. So it will become more digital and as it's not just about scanning and designing, it's also about making it. So we will see more 3D printing in future. We will see also probably more milling in the future. But as the indication depth of what we can do is increasing, and that also the indications are of higher value. Printing models is nice, but printing a splint, printing a crown on a bridge, printing a surgical guide, printing a denture is even nicer. Very nice. <laughs> so this is where we are going. Do you see, sorry, I know I said last question, I that's cheated. Fine. Uh, okay, that's fine. You that's made fine. me later. <laughs> what about for, um, you mentioned splints. What about for sleep-related breathing disorders, for appliances that help with that? Does the 3D printing technology have the ability to help us make that? Yes, exactly. Because the splints that you need for sleep apnea, you know, they're a little bit thicker. Yes. What you cannot print with a 3D printer, now I say the limitations, um, you cannot print um, splints which are 0 0.5, 0 0.7 millimeters. Yeah. So you need to have a, a certain minimum thickness of 1.6 to 2 millimeters. And this is what you also can print in a sleep apnoa device mm -hmm. um, and as well for bruxism. Uh, so these are the two splint types uh, which are able to print as of today. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for spending a little bit of time with us. And on that note, I would like to thank... Andreas Schilteis of Rapid Shape, and um, thank you so much. I will see you next session uh, to end the day. It will be our last session from IDS live. Gesundheit, I'll see you soon. Thank you.